The first stone is pray with the heart. Pray with the heart. In Croatian, it's two words, molite srcem. It means pray using the heart as a tool. Okay, go with me on this, Anne. <laughs> pray through the heart. Pray from the heart. Pray meaning, meaning your prayers. That's what it means, okay? Now, think about when we apologize, when we say the word sorry. You know, in, uh, in England, we are masters of, um, of passive aggression. So when someone steps on my foot, I will turn to them and I will say, sorry, meaning, get off my foot, you idiot. <laughs> right? Okay, so it doesn't mean sorry at all. Or think about a politician who's been caught getting, uh, getting up to hanky-panky, and she, he or she says, I'm sorry for the distress this has caused my family and my constituents, meaning, I'm sorry I got caught, I wish I'd been allowed to get away with this, it's none of your business, okay? Right. So, what, but what happens when a young child, a small child, says sorry? When they say sorry, they cry. Why do they cry? Because they haven't become jaded and cynical like the rest of us. They actually mean it. This is what Our Lady means by pray with the heart. Pray from the heart. Mean your prayers. You know, we always think we have to be high-minded and we pray for big things that we don't even care about. You know, Lord, let there be peace in Siberia or something, you know. Uh, when really we're thinking, Lord, give me a different job because my colleagues are horrible to me and my boss is mean. Okay? We need to pray from the heart. Tell him what we really mean. Do you have distractions when you pray? Yes? Anyone said no? You liar. <laughs> okay, we have distractions because we're not praying from the heart. I want you to imagine a typical scenario, typical. You're in church early, you're preparing for Mass, and then this older gentleman comes along, he kneels in the pew in front of you, he's praying his rosary, and you think, oh, how marvelous. It's so edifying to see that, someone praying the rosary. And then you notice the problem. His dentures are loose. <laughs> and then he's making this kicking sound as he prays. And you think, oh, for heaven's sake, how can I concentrate? <laughs> the next minute, the next minute, this young lass comes and sits next to you. It's summertime, and she has sacrificed herself because of the cotton famine. <laughs> yeah. And you're, and you're thinking, and you're thinking, I don't know where to look, you know? Too much ham, not enough wrapping. Okay? No one, need, no one needs to see that, not even her poor mother. Okay. And then, the next minute, your, your neighbor walks through the church doors, and you see her, and you think, Oh, that witch! How dare she enter the, temp uh, the house of God? How come the Lord has not struck her dead where she stands, that hypocrite? Right? Yeah, I know, it's funny because it's true. It's true. Okay. And then the priest comes out of the sacristy to begin Mass, and you see it's Father Leon, and you think, oh no, he's going to go on and on and on. <laughs> and finally you think, I can't remember if I locked my front door, and I think I left the oven on. <laughs> okay. We need to turn all our distractions into prayer. Say, Lord, please help this gentleman find a good dentist. <laughs> help this young lass learn the virtue of modesty. Show her the kind of guy she's attracting is a jerk. And more importantly, that her female friends that she dresses for have heads filled with mushy peas. <laughs> or, or translation for Americans, guacamole. Okay? <laughs> then, where are we? Oh, your neighbor, the witch. Say, Lord... <laughs> Convert her, convert me, bless both of us. Father Leon, help him to be concise and on time for once. And then your house and your oven, say, Lord Jesus, send your guardian angels, guard my house, turn off the oven, thank you very much, amen. Okay, so we've turned all our distractions into prayer. I'm serious about this, you know, don't think anything is too trivial. If it's, 
if it occupies your thoughts, if it distracts you, it is important. It's important to you, therefore turn it into prayer. But Our Lady says something quite strange. She says, pray the rosary from the heart. How do you pray the rosary from the heart? Okay, a quick story. When I was a child, my parents went out for the evening and left us to mind ourselves, which is a mistake. And we got bored, so we took down all the old black and white photo albums, my grandparents' wedding, that sort of thing. And we were looking through these pictures and, and we are saying, this is our family, how come we're not in these pictures? So we thought, let's remedy that. Okay. So we got a big orange crayon, and we drew ourselves in. So my mother's baptism, there's a gigantic stick figure version of my sister, looming over her cradle with a grin on her face. My parents' wedding, all four of us in the front row, waving. You know? Now, our instinct was a good one, despite the trouble we got into. Our instinct was a good one. Why? Because it's saying, this is my family, how come I wasn't there? Jesus and Mary are our family, how come we weren't there? Think about Renaissance paintings. You have what? The birth of Jesus at Bethlehem with his parents, shepherds, angels, magi, and the two donors of the painting, Don Lorenzo and his wife, Donna Fabrizio. And you think, what are they doing there? Think about, in the convent of San Marco in Florence, there are these beautiful frescoes by Blessed Fra Angelico, the Dominican painter and saint. And you see what? You see Christ crucified with his mother standing at the foot of the cross, supported by St. Catherine of Siena. And you think, what is Catherine doing there? 1,300 years too early. Or you have Christ seated, crowned with thorns, being struck and spat upon and mocked, and St. Dominic in the foreground reading the Gospels. You know, what is Dominic doing there? And how come he's got the Gospels? He's got spoilers. He knows how it all turns out, right? <laughs> okay. The rosary is our orange crayon to draw ourselves in. But more than that, and I mean this quite literally, the rosary is a time machine. Because when you pray, for example, the third joyful mystery, you're not, you're not just imagining the first Christmas. The power of the first Christmas comes to you today, now, when you pray the third joyful mystery. When you pray the fourth sorrowful mystery, you're there with Simon of Cyrene, carrying Christ's cross with him, going up Calvary. When you pray the first glorious mystery, you're there in the garden as Jesus rises from the dead, victorious over sin and death. So in this sense, the rosary is a time machine. I mean that quite literally, okay? But the rosary is also powerful. During exorcisms, the demons will say, we hate that thing, they use a word I can't use, they say, we hate that poo, meaning the rosary, but they also say, thankfully, most priests do not promote it now. Every Hail Mary said from the heart is a hammer blow to Satan's head. Every rosary said devoutly chains and binds the demons, weakens them. It's very powerful. Our Lady here in Medjugorje has asked us to pray the entire rosary, all 15 decades, joyful, sorrowful, and glorious. Do not ask me about luminous, they were not invented when she said this, okay? Joyful, sorrowful, glorious. The, mis the mysteries that she gave to St. Dominic 800 years ago, all right? Now, she began the villages slowly. Initially, she said, pray seven Our Fathers, seven Hail Mary, seven Glory Bees. Then she said, add the creed, add the Apostles' Creed to that. A few months later, she said, okay, pray five decades of the rosary. A few months after that, she said, pray 15 decades of the rosary. And when she said that, the villagers complained. And she said, you don't understand. It takes up so little of your time. Because why? If you say five decades properly, it should take you about 15 minutes minimum. 
Okay, because don't say too fast. You have to slow down, you know. In Singapore, we used to say the, the rosary at what we called, at what everyone called Irish speed, okay? <laughs> we just gamble our way through it. And I remember this Buddhist friend of mine said, oh, you Catholics, you're so weird. What is so blessed about a monk swimming? And we were all scratching our heads, wondering, what is he on about? And it's only when we were praying the rosary we understood. You know, Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with you, blessed are thou, a monk swimming. So, slow down, slow down, slow down, okay? But also ask yourself, how many 15 minute slots of your time have you wasted just surfing the net, eBay, Amazon, or Snapchat, Instagram, Love Island, Coronation Street, Days of Our Lives, EastEnders, how many 15 minute slots of your time have you wasted on absolutely nothing? Those of you who have watched the movie Titanic, that's three and a half hours wasted, right? You'll never get it back. And in the end, she kills him, she pushes him off and he, he you know? And every doctor knows you're not dead until you're warm and dead. So he was still alive when she shoved him off, right? Okay, I've never watched the film, but I know. Okay. It, the rosary does not take up too much time, but Our Lady says she needs us to pray it, and she asks us to pray it every day. Okay.